Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. Welcome, everybody, to the Line of Sight podcast. For this episode, my special guest is none other than the War Boss Fitz, who is another YouTuber who does um, one page rules, 3D printing, all kinds of great stuff like that. So, thanks, War Boss, for joining the channel. Glad you're here for the podcast. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun. I hope so. This ought to be great. So I'll start off the way I plan to start off most of my conversations. Tell me, how did you get into tabletop wargaming? Uh, that's a long, a long time ago. <laughs> Back in the 90s, um, a, a friend of mine introduced me to what a space marine was and uh, went and found a local game store and have been playing ever since. Okay, so my so, uh, 40k was your first foray then? Yep, 40k was my first first jump in. I think it was it was like the tail end of second edition. We all got real upset. We should have seen the writing on the wall for the time to come, but we jumped in in second edition. And like two months later, third edition came out. And we had to buy all new books. Uh, <laughs> well, it was I mean, it was getting you used to the pattern early, right? Yeah, yeah, should have should have seen that coming. So then you started with with the 40k world, which I imagine most most players, it's like that's that's the the gateway. So then, how did you branch out into other stuff? Have you been like a 40k GW person for a super long time? Did you play a bunch of other tabletop games and then find one page rules? Like what 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 path brought you from that first game in the 90, 90s to one page rules today? here um well i the game store that i was part of it was a lot of um older guys and so they had all kinds of stuff they would bring all the time so we would play uh, uh warhammer games games workshop games we'd play like sea krieg osr games chip based games um a bunch of different skirmish type games all kinds of stuff. We we ran the the full gambit of everything back then. Okay, so you had your kind of hands in a bunch of different things. So, did did one uh, like genre appeal to you, or were you just a big fan of whatever they brought you were into? Well, I was a fan of uh, like, I was a fan of the larger strategic games. So, like the the chip based games where you could you could work attack like work tactically and strategically to, you know, swing a whole flank of your army around to, to assault the town or something. So larger base games. So it would be like in games workshop sense, it'd be like uh war master and Epic was what I was really into. And then, and, and okay. So that, cause I noticed on your, your channel, you're, you're, you're printing a lot of those smaller, like 15 millimeter size army stuff. So you're going back to your roots there. Yeah. We're, um, my whole idea with the whole 15 millimeter thing is on the channel, we're going to have a old style campaign going on where it's going to be a nar narrative driven campaign. Kind of like, remember when games workshop did like um, the 13th black crusade, the first one, the first war on Armageddon where you sent in results and you got the community involved. Yes. Yes. It, okay. Yeah. It's going to be like that where I'm going to, I'm going to set the stage for the campaign. Uh, it will be, I'll play one game and then the next game I'm going to set up send the mission out and have the uh have the viewers send me battle reports tell me how this game went and then we'll affect the campaign from there okay cool that's a really cool way to to get your your viewers actually involved cuz i mean that could be a great way to it leaves that mystery open you don't even know what's going to happen to this campaign so you get to see how the stuff comes in from the, the your viewers and the people playing and then it it goes where it goes that sounds like a really yep. fun way to do something like that. I may steal that from you, by the way, then. Oh, by all means, go for it. And then this one is going to, the Age of Fantasy one is going to teach us some things. And then my next one, like my my ultimate, you know, bucket list game would be to do an entire planetary invasion where I'm going to bring in like 32 millimeter games, 15 millimeter, 10 millimeter games, some spaceships, parts of it. And we're going to be in Grimdark Future, uh, you know, uh, invading a uh, star system. I've actually I've had a, an idea for something kind of like that too. You start off with like war fleets as the initial invasion of the space, 
And then the winner of that gets some kind of benefit in the first large scale planetary one. And then that will set the stage for a skirmish game as one unit goes into a specific building. Okay. We're on like the same wavelength here. That sounds pretty awesome. It's going to be like, like the thing I envision is going to be like a continuous thing of like the space battles will be continually going on. There's going to be like five planets getting invaded all at the same time, push and pull between each of them and, and supply drops going between, you know, different convoys to reach the planets. Like my aspirations for this are huge, but I have to figure out how to run a campaign first. So that's why right. we're doing Age of Peace. <laughs> no, that makes sense. You always have these great ideas, and then when you start putting them together, you realize some of these are a lot of work. So, is that what the um, you were building like a, a a map, like a physical map board? Was that for this campaign? Yep, that's what that's what this is for. It's going to be kind of like a desert valley um, where the havoc forces have pretty much taken over the valley, and it's going to be the human empire and their allies trying to push the havoc warriors back and okay. retake it. So then. How did you first get uh, introduced to one page rules then? Oh, uh, well, um, I was doing a lot of 40K uh, and then eighth edition came out and I had, I had my son. And the way I pump out models now, I used to do that in 40K. And well, when you have a kid, you got to prioritize where money goes, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, sure. Wow. I can't, I can't keep, you know, buying models and making armies and then i you know thought about it i was like well i can get a printer because i've heard a lot of good things about printers and then the pandemic happened and uh that's that right there is when i found one page rules like right as the pandemic hit and so i spent the year and a half pretty much figuring out how to print models and then and it no, it's a steep learning curve like i've i've watched just how much stuff you crank out one of your viewers even said that you know, you're a machine with how much you print. For some reason, I haven't quite figured it out yet. I can always get the first run to go smoothly. And then I will print more of the exact same thing. And that print will fail. And I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong. So maybe I'll have to have you have a different meeting with you where you can run me through how you print stuff. Yeah, it's it's a big it's a big balancing act between, you know, temperature in the room, the the viscosity and the different resins that you're using. And then, you know, layer heights that potential it, it it's a big like it's a big three ring circus you got to figure out to have everything come together i found one way um or at least one thing i think that was doing it is humidity i never thought that would be a big problem but you know th- i have one well, room that serves as my painting station my computer for editing videos my game all of it so i try not to print too much because it stinks so badly and once when uh, I had one more print to do, and I thought, well, okay, I got one left. It stinks in here. I'll open the windows. And in Virginia, y- y- you do that. You're just inviting in all this humidity, and the entire print just peeled right off the, the bill plate, dropped into the vat. And I thought, well, that's that. <laughs> yep. yep. It, it is complicated. I wonder, have you it, thought of doing any, like, how-to 3D printing videos, or have you already got those? Maybe I haven't seen those. No, I, I haven't done any of those yet, and it's it's one of those, like, I have a lot of ideas for videos that I want to do, but, like, the, the amount of production I have to do just on the models and the filming of the games and the editing, it's like, I I only set aside so much time per week to do this, and that's just it, trying to find a way to wedge it in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that You're... seems to be the whole point. You are definitely preaching to the choir. Like when I when I started, I thought, you know, how hard can it be? And then 15, 20 hours a week later to, to crank out a couple of videos, I thought, wow, now I can see why some folks start this out and it just kind of peters off because it it's it's a part-time job. So you really yep. have to enjoy doing it. Otherwise it just it'll fall by the wayside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I remember it was a couple of weeks ago. My wife, like, we had something that she had planned but had not informed me of yet. Like, you know no, how wives no. usually... <laughs> They never do that, ever. Never. We just don't listen, right? Yeah. And, um, what... like, I recorded this stuff, and I sat down, I started editing. It was, like, a half hour later, and she's like, aren't you done yet? <laughs> I had to look at her, like, do you think I could just, just, just push, push this out? It takes yeah. a minute. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does. And... I don't know about you, but now when I watch other videos filming bat reps and stuff, I suddenly notice stuff I hadn't noticed before. Like, wow, they actually cut 
quite a bit here, and oh, they're doing this kind of angle, and oh, I, I like suddenly it, it hasn't. It's not like it's ruined it for me, but I don't watch the videos in the same way now that I know how the proverbial sausage is made. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like I I. I come from a blue collar background. I've done a whole lot of construction and stuff like that. And I know the way that things generally mechanically work. And okay. I hate it when I'm watching a movie, especially with my wife and something will happen. I'll be like, that, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> and she'll look at me like, you just shut up. Stop it. <laughs> my, my brother will, I'm hoping to have him on a podcast soon. He's actually a, a video game developer. So he does a lot with computer graphics and physics engines and games. And he'll do stuff like that when CGI movies were first a thing. We'll watch something. He's like, oh, come on, guys. The steam wouldn't be rising off of it like that. And I just look over at him. I'm like, dude, you're ruining it for the rest of us. Nobody else noticed that until you said something. Mm -hmm. So yeah. is, uh, is your wife into war games? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> no, it's uh... It's it's my own my own thing. She's uh she's into computer games. So okay. like whenever I'm painting, she's playing a World of Warcraft with her friends. Oh um, well then she Okay, cool. Um uh, my yeah, like, uh, my brother who I just just interviewed, he's a big WoW player. That's part of the reason I actually uh interviewed him. He's going to be on the podcast that comes out I think uh first week in March. But yeah, he's huge. And the, the reason I wanted to, to interview him is he's big into WoW, and yet he never made the jump over to tabletop games. And to me, that's really interesting because, I mean, World of Warcraft, it's a fantasy setting. It's a role-playing game. And yet people will yep. do one but not the other. Have you, have you tried? Did you play a sample game? She's just like, this isn't my thing? Or she, no, just no interest from the get-go? No interest at all. Like, she would look at it, and, and her thought was just like, that's, that's his thing. I'm... I had, she had no no desire whatsoever. Huh, interesting. So. My wife did once. I guess you would call it a pity game. Uh, I tried to <laughs> I tried to get her into the hobby. I actually built a small Imperial Guard army when I uh, for forty k, and I painted it our wedding colors. <laughs> like I tried to make it like this is yours, dear. And she played <laughs> once just to acknowledge the effort I put in, and then it was over. She's like, that was great. We're probably never going to do that again. I thought, oh, well, you know, I tried. What can you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I imagine, though, you, uh, you're, you're going you're to start sneaking in subliminal messages to your son, though. Like, give him little safe 3D printed things to play with and be like, you know, as you get older, we can do more with these. Oh, absolutely. Like, um, whenever it's warm enough to where he can come out in the garage, he will, he'll be like, Daddy, what can I do? And I'll have him roll dice for me. Awesome. And uh, he gets so excited about that. And then I've done, I've printed some models for him because he, like, my painting station down in the basement, right next to mine is his painting station. So he paints pictures and, and I've printed off some, some dinosaurs for him to paint. So that's pretty cool. I, yeah. I tried to get my kids into it, but I think one of them, I pushed a little too hard. Like, I expected a little more. And, and rather than desire, generate an interest in the game, I think I may have accidentally driven him away from it. He's kind of come back. He plays a lot of uh, Battletech. He really likes Battletech. He plays Magic. You know, he's he's into this kind of a hobby, but uh, not quite into the the miniature war gaming thing. So right now, then, is is one page rules like your exclusive, or do you still dabble in lots of other games? Right now, right now, one page rules is my exclusive that I do. Like I'm. Like like where I am, just the age of all of my gamer friends, they all have kids, you know, we might be able to get together like once every two weeks. And I've I've converted all of them to one page rules. <laughs> so it's that's that's our game of choice. That's nice. Uh, one one thing I've heard from a lot of uh comments on the videos I've done is a lot of people have trouble finding a one page rules community. Some of them mm -hmm. even run into hostility maybe not hostility but definitely a cold shoulder like at local gaming stores so that's really nice to be able to have friends folks around you who are willing to to play it with you yeah there was definitely there was definitely a lot of hostility at the game stores when i showed up i was like hey guys you want to play one page rules and like the the die hard 40k players absolutely not the game is a rip off blah 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 but Whenever I would go, there would always be the one person that would raise an eyebrow. And I'd like, I'd say, I remember you. 
and I would message them behind the scenes away from the gaming group. And then I've pretty much built a one page rules community up here slowly, piece by piece. So we got about about seven or eight of us right now. And well, we're trying to convert good. more. That's pretty good. I think I've got maybe a few less than that, but it's kind of the same tactic as, as you. I'll go to the game store and I mean we have the local game store here, there's 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 historic stuff, there's games workshop stuff. Like you, I think I'm the the, the one who started the one page rules community here, but I'll hang around the 40k tables and just wait till someone complains about something. And then I'll go, you know, if you want to try a game that doesn't have that, I got one. Or when they complain, you know, these models are so expensive, or do I have to buy a new codex? I'll be like, you know, I know a game that's free. And and Mm -hmm. I've got a few people trying it from that. But uh, I mean, the, the, that loyalty to games workshop, that's pretty intense. Yeah, there, there's a one gaming store that I I'll say it's around me, but man, it's a, two hour drive to get there they have built a a one page rules community there and they actually run tournaments for it so i've been able once just on a random tuesday i think i was able to get there and uh you know they've built something and i wish i was closer but what are you gonna do right i mean the the geographies it's it is what it is Let's see, what was I going to ask you? Oh, well, of course, the one thing we got to ask you about here. So what made you decide to start a YouTube channel to share the hobby, the 3D printing, all that stuff with the world? Um, the guy who introduced me to Warhammer all the way back in the 90s, we've kind of kept in touch. and We had a, a group of friends back then who all played with us. Well, we all dispersed throughout the country and did, did all kinds of stuff. Um. <clears throat> Well, for some reason, we all just started randomly messaging each other, and we started pushing each other to do stuff. And one of my friends, um, one of my friends, used to be the art director for Blizzard. Oh he wow! Up, yeah, he ended up pulling that off, and I was like, "Whoa, where'd that come from? I haven't been paying attention to what you did." He's like, "Yeah, it was a thing." He like he he downplays it completely. Like, "Yeah, it was just part of my life. I did it. It was cool," and then. He saw some of the things I was doing with different, uh, with, with one page rules with the group here. And he was just like, you got to do something. You got to make a YouTube channel. And I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. What's the worst that could happen? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my first couple of videos were just bad, but I think everybody uh, does can say that. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, so it's the constant encouragement from that that friend group has has you know pushed me to to make the YouTube channel. And then once it started getting steam, it was something I enjoyed doing. So I just I'm I'm still going. We're pushing it. We're we're going to keep going for for the foreseeable future. Yeah, and you started you started yours I think a couple months before I did. You were what June or July? It was before my first video, I think, was in April of last year. April. Okay. Okay. Because when I started uploading videos, YouTube instantly started recommending yours. And I looked and I'm like, you know, I checked out the channel. It said member since 2023. And I thought, oh, okay. So uh, this is new as well. So like we're, we're both kind of go, going through the same thing together. So what, what's been the learning curve that you found? What were some of the big, not necessarily obstacles, but when you jumped in, you said the first couple of videos were terrible. What did you do to mm-hmm. fix that? Like, how, how did you turn it into something from this is awful to I really like this and I want to keep doing it? My first couple of videos, like I, I was running, I was making a story for my orcs that it didn't really go anywhere. I was just farting around with it. But then um, like I was part of the one page rules Reddit community mm-hmm. and at one point, someone said, why don't we have the the different, like, army showcase videos? And I was like, well, because there's only, like, three of us <laughs> on YouTube. That's why. And um, so finally, after thinking about it for a couple hours, I was like, fine, I guess I'll be that guy. So it turned into every week I have the my people in my community section vote on the army of the week. And then I just go build and paint and play that army and do do an army showcase on it. And that's just been because, like, I have a, I have love for specific armies, but it's not like 
fanatic love for armies. Like I, I, I love all of it. I want to learn how to do all of it. And that's kind of what's been the fun part. Oh, absolutely. You know, you get to find something new. Cause I was that same way when I played games workshop, like every time I would learn anything about one of the new 40 K or Sigmar armies, almost without exception, like I want to play this. I want to collect this army. I want to play it. But the cost was so prohibitive. So then when I come over to one page rules, through the Patreon, I got access to everything, and it's really now whatever army I want, I can make it, and I can yep. play it. And it's just like, this is, I mean, this is every tabletop war gamer's dream here. Yeah, that, and with the, with the 3D printing, like, going through my mini factory, I'll go browse that, and I'll find some amazing-looking stuff. And because the model agnostic aspect of one page rules, I go, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do these models. I just have to find an army to match the models. Yes. And that's, that's a fun part too. Yeah. I have gone down that rabbit hole uh, when I was looking for models, cause I wanted to do a fantasy dwarf army. And so I'd go to my mini factory and just type fantasy dwarves or something. And an hour or two later, I'd suddenly realize, wow, I've just been browsing dwarf STLs for the last two hours or something. And, adding this to favorite list. And I'm like, wow, you could put together a really nice looking army. It'd all be fairly uniform, but you've got at least a half a dozen different things here. So I yep. think that's a, one of the great parts of it. Seen you said every week you're cranking out a new army. That's impressive. How, how do you manage that? Just playing games workshop stuff for, for 20 years. It was, um, I don't know. I just, I have gotten myself into like a speed painting mentality. I sit down, I look at the models, like they pretty much tell me what color they want to be painted, and then I just go. Well, that's nice. I have to anguish for days before I finally settle on a color scheme and then paint the first one and go, ah, that sucks. And then back to back to stage <laughs> one. So when you say when you say speed paint, do you mean actually like the army painter speed paints, or you just refer to as you just paint quickly? Like what's what's your preferred uh painting? Well my uh, my preferred, mine. like the whole the whole slap shop thing when that got popular. I remember looking at that and going, "I've been doing that for years, guys. It's not a new thing." But uh, yeah, it's uh, contrast paints, speed paints, uh, oil washes. I make myself using oil paint and paint thinner. Um, different different uh, like area effects or, or ground effects I can do on things. Different textures I can throw on models. It's just stuff that I can kind of. It, it's one of those like like. The, the especially because the friends I'm talking about from back in high school, we went to like an art magnet high school where you had to like show them a portfolio and you were accepted in and it was like a legitimate four years of art. It's not it's not like I went to an art college, but it was like a call it like an art magnet program. And I don't really know why my parents wanted to put me in there because it was like an hour away from my house. But I showed them my portfolio of edgy teenage doodles and they said, yeah, sure. OK, I early prep, I guess, for the grim darkness of uh, either the far future or, or what have you. All right. Yeah. Then the funny thing was I when I discovered John Blanche and his grim dark style, I was like this. This is what I want to do. So it's kind of preordained from the beginning for me. So yeah, you were doing slap chop before it was cool. <laughs> yeah, except we we just called it like undercoating. <laughs> yeah, well, I and I'd heard of that before, like you, the idea of you prime it and then give it a, a quick, uh, like a highlight with a slightly lighter, and then paint over top of that. But I'd never heard of it as a full, a full on method. And the first time I tried it, it, it was I was using opaque paints after, and I thought it doesn't matter what I spray paint this thing as, the color just covers it all, anyways. So I never did it right. That was my problem. I never did it right. Yeah, it was back when we used to have to go to like Michael's Art Supply and buy the specialty, like the the specialty like mediums for paints. Yeah, things did not things weren't as user friendly back then. You had to kind of know how to mix things to get the right consistency you were looking for. Right. Whereas now every paint line has you know twenty different shades of every single color, and you could just line them up and use this one, then this one, then this one, and you'll get the exact effect that you're looking for. Oh, that's what I was gonna gonna ask is you you, you dabble with every single army though. Um, do you have what are your favorite ones though? Like if you weren't being necessarily directed by viewers to say, hey, we'd like to see this, we'd like to see that. If you had one that you would really build out to its full, which one would it be? 
Well, I'll 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 kind of cheat and say there is one that I've built out to its full. Okay. <laughs> is uh, 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 it would be Grim Dark Future Orc Marauders. Yeah, I, I have no idea what the point value is, but I know that I have seventy five pounds of orcs. <laughs> When you start measuring your collection in weight rather than in points or number of models, you you've hit a new level, I guess. Yep. <laughs> now is that is that the one that you did the paint scheme modeled after Fury Road? Yeah, that's one of them. I have multiple ones. That's one of my orc clans. Those are the Wa Boys, and then I have um, uh, ones that are modeled like uh, big mechs in junkyards with death dreads, and then I have one that's dedicated to entirely orcs with jetpacks, and then I have uh, speed boys, which are all orcs on bikes and copters and 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 trucks and other things. Yeah, it's I have a problem. <laughs> I think anyone who's in this hobby is familiar with that problem. I mean, that's the whole pile of shame. Whereas, uh, obviously, you're doing something with it, so that's great. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done? Have you? What's the biggest one-page rules game you've ever run? Like points, points-wise, how big have you gotten? Like, like I, I didn't record this is before the channel, but uh, we did a ten thousand point uh, one-page rules game. And how long did that take? Just out of curiosity. Uh, about four hours. See, that's not bad. That's not bad <laughs> at all. A lot of stuff died really, really fast. So by yes. like turn three, we we're probably down to like two thousand points. Just a regular game, whereas ten thousand points of forty k four hours is called turn one. Now I've I've done a game about that large, a ten thousand pointer, but specifically to try and pare it down, we did mostly super elites. So one side had tons of we were using Bane Blades as the model, but really heavy tanks. The other side was massive mechs. They were the Night Titans. So although it was 10,000 points, it really wasn't that many more models than what you would normally see. So were mm -hmm. you doing that on a 6x4 table, or did you have something bigger? No, it was a 6x4 table. We were packed. I was running my orcs, and thankfully, the beginning of the game, everybody was in a transport, so I only had to move you know, the, the APC instead of... Instead of I think there was like 450 just orc boys in that army. Cool. So do you have plans of doing anything like that for the channel? Doing something massive or for now you're doing uh, smaller stuff? Well, we're the, there's going to be like offshoot games. Like I'll still do the army of the week thing, but then like in the background, I'm constantly making stuff for other armies. Like I have one coming out, like right now it's set to members only, but it's coming out tomorrow and it's a 3000 point game. So, I mean, that's that's a step up. Um, and then, yeah, there's going to be larger games that it's it's not really going to be like a, a planned thing. It'll just be one day I'll throw out a game. Here's 5,000 points. Yeah, go where the wind takes you. No, that makes sense. Um, so what's your... Uh, have you done dabbled at all in uh, War Fleets at all? I did. Well, I did the uh, the FTL before it turned into War Fleets. Oh, okay. And I, I haven't... I haven't really revisited it since. So I, okay. I will. <laughs> Just I, I haven't gone back to look at it since it's become Warfleets. I played one game because uh, uh, one of the regulars that I have who comes on quite a bit, he was super excited. He has an old Battlefleet Gothic fleet that has been sitting on his shelf since uh, you know, 20, 30 years. And when, when they re-released Warfleets, he said, Chris, we've got to do something. And so I said, okay. So we filmed one. I'm sure that's not one of the greatest uh, productions I've ever done because it's different filming that kind of a game as opposed to like a traditional Grimdark Future or Age of Fantasy. So yep. I, I have no idea if, if when you start doing that, you'll, you'll figure it out, but it just doesn't quite work the same way. So that one, I think, uh, yeah, like with you, was... right now it's members. It'll come out in a couple weeks, but it was a bit of a learning yeah. curve. Yeah, I've done I've done a few videos on FTL, and I found like I, you can't because you can't really put just a wound marker on it. So I ended up making an overlay of like the damage track with different ah, you know okay. dots on there. It I, I don't know it worked you know mechanically it worked, but I just felt like it was really clunky. So I'll I'll work something out with that. Right, and then by doing that, that uh, you know that at least triples the production time. Because right. for each each thing you've got to add in all of that. It, it it I mean it makes the videos look fantastic, but that's like I was saying earlier, now that I've 
done some of this video editing, when I see some of the things people do on their videos, I think, wow, that's a good three or four hours of work for 30 seconds of video. Like, I take yep. my hat off to you for that one. So um, we're getting... We're getting closer to uh, to the end here. Don't want to keep you all the time. So what's what's uh, on the horizon for your channel? Let's do a little plug for it. What's coming up? What should people be excited for? Well, the uh, I've set a date for the Age of Fantasy campaign kickoff. is going to be March 10th. So that's going to be the first game, and that's going to lead into the first uh, viewer game. Uh, I'm currently working, uh, the army of this week is the war disciples. So I'm going to have a whole lot of, uh, blood crazed madmen with chain axes, trying to chop down trees. They're going to be fighting against the three men. And then after that, it looks like we're going to do an orc episode. About how far, um, how far in advance do you, you, you plan your, um, your different episodes? Is it kind of go where the wind takes you? Or do you have like a set for the next three months? This is what we're going to do. Oh no, I I don't plan anything that far ahead. It's um I am I want to say 2 weeks ahead for the army of the week. So for the war disciples, they 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 got officially voted on on Saturday. And then I have the week to paint get them printed and painted ready for the next Saturday. So it's it's a one week time frame there, and then currently the voting is for the week after that, and it's a toss up between the human defense force and the orcs. It's it's close. We're gonna it's gonna come down to the wire. But for those two, I already have those armies made, so oh, I'm yeah. gonna have a week to like work on other stuff. So that's that's how the whole campaign came together. Really, is because somebody they well the viewers voted on an army that I already had. So I was like, okay, I can do something else. I can I can work a different direction this week. I I, I did have that when uh, someone once commented, they said, "Hey, can you should do a video about this or do this kind of video?" And I thought, ha, that's actually already uploaded and just waiting to release. I can take time off now. <laughs> there you go. That's very nice. Okay, um, how much would you say uh, in in any given week? How much time are you able to dedicate to? Painting and that side of the hobby versus playing a game versus editing and recording. For anyone who might be interested in starting a YouTube channel, hearing from someone who's, you know, fairly new at it but has kind of found their groove. Well, I, I've I've definitely streamlined this process down, but uh, in over the course of the week, there's about twenty hours of printing and painting. That gets that gets a whole army printed and painted and done. Is that on one printer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's on one printer. I run one Mars 2 Pro. <laughs> that's it. So I'm able to pull off like regular sized infantrymen. I'm able to pull like five or 10 sometimes if they're real skinny. But uh, yeah, so that thing is running constantly. I was going to say, if you print an army a week on one printer, that thing just never stops. Pretty much. It's, uh, I, I have it set to where I can, I can start like during the week. I start a print in the morning when I wake up. I come home from work at night, I start another print, and then depending on what it is, I can usually get that print done and then start another one for overnight for the next day. Okay, so about that. So that's the time dedicated to the printing. Then when are you able to do your, your painting and all that good stuff? Oh, that's, that's uh, about four hours a night during the week. Um, the, the, the little one goes to bed at eight o'clock. And then I'm usually up till midnight painting. I, I so. think your uh, your viewer was correct when he said you're a machine. Like, holy cow, that's a <laughs> well, that's dedication there. It's one of those. I just go down to the basement and I I turn on podcasts or different videos and have those playing in the background while I'm just just whittling away. I was actually going to uh, ask if, if you're if you're doing that much painting, what kind of stuff do you have on in the background? So. Podcasts, I imagine other YouTube videos, stream a movie yeah, or something like that. Yeah, podcasts, and then I'm I've somehow I fall into the rabbit hole of anime recaps. <laughs> I watch a lot of those. And, I mean, um, when you paint as much as you do, you burn through stuff to listen to and watch very quickly. I've binged entire television shows in a matter of weeks that ran for decades. It's like wow. I'm going through this a lot faster than I should be. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like, I'll sit down to watch something. I don't even look at anything unless it's over a half hour long. 
<laughs> and then that way you can start telling, all right, so tonight I watched three of these, so that's about two hours. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so about you've so you've got the printer going continuously for around four hours a night painting, and then how much time does it take you to do the playing and then the recording and video editing and all that stuff? Well, Saturday is game day. So that's uh, I usually start that about ten o'clock in the morning, and depending on how how out of left field the games can get, sometimes you know uh, the game's usually done between all my recording and and bouncing back and forth between the cameras. It's usually done by about two o'clock, and then load everything up with the computer, start editing immediately, and then that's usually done by about ten o'clock at night, where I could just uh, I've streamlined I've. I have this library now of all my sound effects and overlays I can put on. So I'm like, oh, I know I could pull this from here instead of having to search the internet for something. Yeah, I do know what you're talking about there. You, you find kind of your little, your snippets, your sound effects, your video clips, whatever, and you just have them on your global resources and just keep pulling them down as you need them. Well, um, is there anything that you want to close on, end on, words of wisdom, snappy cliches, anything like that? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, the, the big thing is that at the end of the day, just remember everybody, this is a game, you know, don't, don't take it too seriously. Don't make it your whole existence. Um, cause I know some people that have gotten deep into, into 40 K that that is their whole thing right now. And it's like, guys, calm down. It's just a game. That is, that is true. I, I have seen, it's fun to always, you know have a conversation with someone over the lore or backgrounds or something, something like that. But when, when I saw two folks once, I mean, they were actually getting mad because they disagreed over a point of something in the past. And I thought, okay, we've crossed a line here. Like, it's cool that you're that passionate about your hobby, but there does come a point where you need to realize we're grown men playing with little pieces of plastic here. So let's not get, uh, let's not get too crazy. Yeah, in the early days of the videos, I used to end it out with, guys, remember, it's just man dollies, because that's what my wife would call it. And people would get so upset over that. I'd be like, okay, I'll change it. I'll stop <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Put it in fine print in the in the video description or something like that. But cool. Right. Well, awesome. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Obviously, you, you have a lot of time that you spend towards doing this, so I appreciate you spending some time here talking with us about it. Um, for everybody listening... Um, Warboss Fitz, he's got his YouTube channel that is the name itself, I'll actually have in the description below a link to it so you can check it out, and uh, thanks to everyone for joining us and we will see you on the next podcast next month